Okay, hello everybody, welcome. Holy shit, what is this, more than one video a week? You've only ever posted one video before this, and this that was more than a month ago, I think, at this point. Yeah, I know, I'm as shocked as y'all. But here's the deal, I want to talk to you about something. Well, I want to talk to you about two somethings. I First of all, okay, so I'm a member of this subscription box service. And don't worry, I'm not trying to sell you on it. Well, I kind of am trying to sell you on it. But it's because it's something very, very, very... I like this service a lot. It's called Book of the Month. And for $40 for three months, at least that's what I'm paying, I believe... I don't believe they have a pay for a single month you have to pay for three months in advance but i could be wrong about that but yeah i chose the for 40 buck for 40 40 40 40 dollars three months you get a single book but this is not simply just a book this is a hardcover book unlike other services that do the whole bunk of book of the month thing this is an actual hardcover book. Like, this feels good. This, you could murder somebody with this. But yeah, um, I'm a part of this service called Book of the Month. And they send you, as you might have heard on their little thing, a book a month. So for the price of $40, which is, um, for $40 for three months, you get, that's what, fucking a dollar, uh, ten, do, 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 do. I cannot think. 10, yeah, that's like 13.33 a book. Good quality hardcover books, by the way. The kind you can kill somebody. Per, you can maybe beat someone to death. You get good hardcover a month. And, you know, they have all the basics. Like, basically, they have a selection of four or five books a month. And you get to read the synopsis and what the judge thinks about it. And you get to choose your book. Or you can choose to skip that month, of course. And you can, like, you know... The next month, if you find something you like, you can get that. But, yeah, basically. I've been a part of this service for a while. And, unfortunately, like, shit, my life has just been getting a bit busy. In which case, I've been able to read them. So, I have a backlog of these things. So, I'm probably going to try and read a book a week to tell you about them. But, this particular book is one I've been reading through a while called Perfect Little World. By one Mr. Kevin Wilson. And, let me tell you. This book is fucking great. Okay? If you see this book, buy it. So, um, Perfect Little World, or as it might alternatively be titled, Intelligent People Doing Questionable Things, or Intelligent People Making Questionable Decisions, is a fantastic book. It's just, oh, I love it. So, um, so the first half is devoted to introducing this character called Izzy. Now, Izzy is a senior in high school. Oh, God, that's already the start to some pretty bad shit. And some, uh, it's a bit cliched in how it starts off. Because uh, Miss Izzy is doing all A's. She's basically a little prodigy. People love her. That's done low. That's, oh, no, no, that's, sorry about that. My headphones were done charging. But, yeah, she's basically perfect A's, about to be a valedictorian. And one day she realizes, if I'm valedictorian, I'm going to have to make a speech. And I don't want to do that. So she goes up to her art teacher, who she feels is the one she's most connected to, and goes, hey, I want you to fail me. And he's like, wait, what? And he, she's like, I don't want to do, I don't want to run the risk of being asked to do a speech at the end of the year at my graduation ceremony because I'm valedictorian. So I want you to fail me. So I'm no longer valedictorian. And he's like, okay, I'll tell you what. You do your utmost best in this class, and I won't fail you, but I will give you a C. And she's like, that works too. And this is like, it explains how she kind of has, this is like the catalyst for her to get in a relationship with this 30 or so year old man. Like, she, she's had a crush on this guy for a while now because of how he looks at the world, because of how he sees the world. But now, this somehow convinces her to go through with it and to actually try to get into a relationship. She, like, flat out kisses him, and he's like, this is a terrible idea. And then he goes through it anyways, because um he is a bit mentally unstable. And by a bit, I mean in the book, it's said that she 
has witnessed him on occasion get so frustrated that he goes up to the nearest wall and just kind of smashes his head against it until he feels better. So, yeah, literally, this is not like, oh, he's a bit kooky, eccentric artist. This is no, he smashes heads against walls, he takes off his shoes, and he's, like, he's full-on mentally unstable. Like, when he goes to watch movies, he, like, takes off, he, like, takes everything out of his pockets and takes off his shoes, and he has to, like, blot out the rest of the world, and it's like, oh, he's just, he's full-on just not mentally there. But, um, so they get into this relationship, and approaching the end of the year, um, something hap- an event happens, a very cliched event, and I'm giving- I'm guessing you can guess what happens between these two. It is revealed, eventually, that the teacher is a supernatural creature. God, no. No. Thank God. I mean, thank God that he's not. That's just one cliche that we can do out without teenage romance, but- I've read a lot of young adult novels, for lack of a better thing to do, and oh, you would not believe how many have that plot point. But no, this is, it turns out that the second most used, uh, most used plot point in these sort of young girl, do, young people doing questionable things, well, the young girl who is the main character doing questionable things, she gets preggers. Um, so she, they eventually go out and she's like, oh shit, I'm pregnant. Oh shit, what am I going to do? Oh shit, it's okay. Everything's going to be fine. I'm going to tell him and everything's fine. So she tells him and he's like, oh, the teacher's like, okay, uh, all right, that's, oh. And then things go in for a while. It seems like, okay, maybe this is going to throw us a curveball by like, the guy is not an enormous douchebag and just leaves her. But unfortunately... The art teacher is literally mentally unstable, so um, bad things bad things happen, and he gets taken out of the picture. Okay, so you know they go to this movie theater to watch a movie, and then there's there's those there's those really fucking the people who should burn in hell movie theater talkers, but like the ones that are con like they're trying to do like funny riff tracks on movies. Except that, like, people are trying to seriously watch the movies. Like, we've all had this experience. One of the reasons why I don't go to fucking movie theaters is because there's always this one asshole. And usually it's a shitty child, which just makes me want to punch them more because I'm not legally allowed to. But who just won't shut the fuck up. So yeah, there's these people, like, doing that. And eventually that causes the art teacher to, like, just, you know, wail on a motherfucker. And he gets taken out of the equation. Um, he's arrested, and she's like, shit, I'm gonna have to do that single mom thing. And, you know, over the course of this first half of the book or so, we learn that she, you know, she has a father who, um, ever since, you know, her mom died, so single parent, the dad's just kind of, like, withered away because, like, oh, without the mom, I'm nothing, yada yada. And she ends up working at this barbecue restaurant for... She's been working at this barbecue restaurant in high school, it appears, to, like, so just, like, bring in her own income part-time. But now she's working there full-time now that she's graduated. And eventually it comes out that she's pregnant and the person who first knows about it isn't even her dad. It's actually the um, smoke cooker who's teaching her how to barbecue... And, like, they have a very good relationship. Like, in, like, her father's not really there besides existing, but he, like, becomes, like, this pseudo-father figure to her. And it's, like, it's really heartwarming. This is a really heartwarming moment in the book. But eventually the mom of the art teacher comes and she goes, So, yeah, you have, you have my grandkid in you. You're cooking my grandkid. You're gonna make, you're gonna pop out my grandkid. And she's like, okay, listen. I know my son is not mentally stable and he is unav- unavailable to help you raise this child. Well, I know of this project called the Infinite Family Project. And I, th- and I can get you in this project and you can, this will help you, I believe. And she's like, okay. And she's like, here's all this information. If you want in on this project, I can pull some strings and get you in. Um, just go to this place at this time, and you can learn about it.
Okay, I'm alone in my house, and it sounds like someone's walking in here. This is fucking creepy. But who gives a shit? I'm talking about a book. So yeah, after that, we get introduced to the secondary character, the second main character, so Mr. Preston Grind. Dr. Grind. It's just... Oh, wow. This His last, his name, his official title makes him sound like a fucking supervillain. And if he, his backstory makes... Actually makes... It like, if you wanted to be a supervillain and live up to your name, you would be well into your right. But Mr. Grind is a genius, and supposedly this genius comes from the way his parents raised him. His parents are child psychologists, and they believe the best way to raise a child is through this thing called the constant friction method. Now, the constant friction method is basically taking a child and randomly putting them in situations that will test them. Like, the, once it's described that they took him, placed him in a room with no lights and, like, a bunch of puzzles, and he had to solve these puzzles to unlock the door to leave. Or, like, um, they would give him toys and stuff, and then suddenly would just take away the toys, leave him with nothing, or, like, they would be, like, playing with him, interacting with him, and then they would just stop. They would just ignore his presence entirely. And basically doing test after test and putting him in very uncomfortable situations all throughout his childhood. And they claimed that by doing this, they were going to raise a super genius. And since he became a genius child, it's like, we succeeded! And it's like, oh... And Mr. Preston is doing... He's put out a couple of books, and one of them was talking about how if you want children to be, to be the best they can, they have to be raised with constant love and care, seemingly... So he says supposedly that it is not supposed to go against what his parents do, but there's like, oh wow, there might be some resentment there. But yeah, um, Preston Grind, he's this researcher who was put through this process, which supposedly makes him like incredibly emotionally tough. But at the same time, um, oh god, I'm not gonna ruin it, but you learn a few things about what his fam parents did to him. Like, when you first learn about it, it's like, oh, that's pretty fucked up. But then you learn about some of the things in detail, and oh, let me tell you, if you get, like, if child abuse or, like, um, just innocent things being threatened makes you upset, like, there were some legitimate moments where I had to, like, put this book down and walk away. And, like, walk around my room slash house for a while because I was so upset. But, yeah, he was put in this, like, very, very um, negligent childhood. And he wants, he said, supposedly the best way to raise a child is through love and care. And, actually, one of the best ways to raise children might be communal share raising. And he eventually gains the um, attention. This supposed theory he puts out gets the attention of this millionaire who goes... Okay, I want to give you money and create a compound which will allow you to make this a reality. So ends up making up the Infinite Family Project. And the idea of this is to take um, a couple, a dozen or so families, um, a dozen, it's either a dozen or 20, I can't remember, but a dozen or 20 families, um, a mother, a father, and a child's children who are all born within the same year and have them raise the children communally like the children will not know who their parent is until their fifth or sixth year like the children will all sleep in the same room in the same cribs or in the same in a room filled with like bunk beds they'll sleep in the same area and the parents will take turns doing different things like they'll have a music class and the parents you know they have a schedule certain parents will be teaching them music and certain parents will be teaching them words and certain parents will be uh, washing them as they sleep and certain parents will be feeding them and so on and so forth so it's like these kids are being raised by a couple dozen or so pairs of parents and of course you know he, what he wants to do is he wants to bring parents of all sorts he wants to bring parents from a um families of the upper class and some poorer families and in one instance a single parent who turns out to be izzy and he just wants to put them in this situation and just experiment and see what the kids think. And what they're going to do is they're going to um, monitor the children. And they're going to give them, like, psychological tests and stuff. And they're going to be like, okay, this is how they compare to normal children. And we're going to see if this aids the children. And, yeah, that's where the story, like, you know, that's where their two stories intersect. Izzy and Dr. Grimes. It's like, Izzy has her kid, um, a little boy by the name of... 
I don't remember what his name is actually because I'm fucking awful with names. But yeah, it's about these group of families and what happens as they interact with their children, but they're not allowed to tell them that you are my child. They say, we are all of your parents and you are all their children. And it's like, it talks about their life like that. Like, um, it talks about the parents. Like, it's Izzy's whole... It goes through Izzy's eyes as she interacts with other parents and interacts with the children and her thoughts on this whole system and what she feels. And also we get a look at the researchers and the information they're gathering through Dr. Grant and how he feels about this whole process. But, um, yeah, just... And it goes through, like, um, the second half is um, devoted to two parts. One is the, you know, the first five years or so when all the parents are told all, and the, where all the children are told that all this is all this parents and everything's good, everything's fine, it seems to be working. But then we get to the second half where the parents get to grab their children and the children are introduced to their birth parents. And that's when things start to fall apart. And it's, oh, it's fascinating. Just, this is a good book. Perfect Little World. I'm going to link it to Amazon through an affiliate link. And you can buy it there. Or you can, I'll link um, to Book of the Month. It's not an affiliate link. As far as I'm concerned, they don't do for affiliate links. But yeah, I'll have a link to Book of the Month. Just if you, this book, if you see it, or if you're interested, buy it. It's really good. But yeah, um... Yeah, that's it, I guess. Um, Perfect Little World by this book. So, yeah, that's just my little look at a book. Just a whole rambly review thing. If you like this video, as always, like it. And if you didn't, there's a button for that, too. Like. Uh, I already said that. Comment. Subscribe. Ring the bell. And um, if you like this, feel free to check out my other two, um, my other two channels. I have... Juan Moore video where I do reviews and opinion pieces on anime, mong and anime video games, and maybe even television. Who knows? I may be subscribing back to Netflix to see what's going on there. Lots of good shit has been coming out. And you know what? Amazon offers an HBO subscription. So I have Amazon Prime. I might as well check out Amazon. Just get on that Game of Thrones. I've read all the books. And let's just face it, Mr. Martin is probably going to die before he finishes the last one, so I might as well just get current with the series. And I also have one more Let's Play, my channel where I do Let's Plays. I have a full Let's Play of Dark Souls, and I'm currently doing Dark Souls 2, Scholar of the First Sin. It is trash. I do not like that game. I mean, it's okay, but I've been, I've gone through a pretty shitty, some pretty shitty areas. And after that, I of course plan on doing Dark Souls 3, all the DLC, and after that, Bloodborne. But yeah, that's been me for the day. Buy this book, subscribe to this channel and all the other ones. But yeah, I'll see y'all next time. Peace.